yeah so today um as as you know better than i we're talking about cookies um because uh we are um we're working through the chapter in javascript for r that uh, relates to using cookies within shiny and the um kind of setup that you need to do in order to make them work um uh, and and you arthur are going to be presenting it to us <laughs> So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know how, how this chapter really was. I mean, I read, I read through it and stuff. I've not really worked through the examples. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's an interesting thing to know about because I don't really ever use anything related to cookies, personally. But, um, yeah, nor, nor, nor I. But, uh, I mean, you're, you're much more in the shiny space than, than I am. Um, I mean, one question I kind of, one maybe naive dumb question I came away from the chapter with is um, whether this kind of setup could help with um, with authentication uh, on, on sites. Um, I'm actually, sh shame on me, I'm not quite sure how, how that works, but I, I can kind of assume that like you can you provide your username and password, it's maybe valid, maybe it's stored as a cookie in your browser, and then when you come yeah. back to a site, the site fetches it from browser storage. Um, I guess, mm. but yeah. uh... Uh, I, <laughs> I don't really know to be honest. I'd I'd be surprised if it's. Um, I I suspect there is something considerably more complicated. One would hope. For, uh, <laughs> authentication, but um, presumably cookies are involved at some point in the um, the, the 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 workflow for that, but uh, I don't I don't know offhand i'm afraid um but yeah i mean for for authentication particularly like in shiny the, the there's there's a few tools like um auth zero and things like that that people use and um that th this always seems to be like a kind of um it, it's like something that's put in in between the shiny app and the user's um access to the server basically and uh, anyway I don't, I don't really know i don't, I don't really understand the, the 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 technology at all um but yes um yeah so i don't i don't really know quite possibly the the cookies are involved somewhere in that stack but um, I, I don't really know yeah um but i imagine this is a part of the world that will move quite fast so the the chapter talked about a library js cookie which is um which, which which you're kind of embedding in your shiny app exactly i imagine there's alternative libraries in javascript and i imagine there's packages that handle cookie management within r already um and uh, although it it may it, although it's a use a, an interesting chapter there may be more kind of robust ways of doing this already written for r but um yeah uh, i don't know yeah so if you want to um kinda... yeah let me let me get us started then let me share my screen uh, yeah sorry the uh, bear with me uh, uh um I, I, real, I realized before, just as I was kind of uh, knitting everything, that I, I left a few little pieces out. So I guess I'll, I'll fill in verbally uh, what, what I'd intended to put there. Um, uh, so I mean, you know, basically, kind of the goals of this chapter, is, as, as I understand them, is to uh, is really to understand how to. Um, um, well, sorry. Let, let me reframe. So up to this point, we'd seen ways in which we could utilize JavaScript. Um, among other things, to build custom shiny outputs, to build custom shiny inputs. Um, and in a certain sense, uh, these cookies, at least by the way I see them, are sort of like a, a subtle, uh, kind of like a, a subtle shiny input, as we'll, as we'll come to see, like a way in which we can fetch values from cookies and then bring them into, into the shiny interface for things to happen, right? Um, so it, it was kind of an interesting 
interesting use case. Um, and was something that's really pervasive in, in um, you know, general web development. Uh, yeah. It would be good to kind of think a little bit, you know, outside of the bounds of this chapter about, uh, you know, as you and I were just discussing how, how, how one could use this in, 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 in practice, yeah. you know, at, like you, I don't have any use cases right now, but it's not to say that, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, once now that I have this, uh, the, this, I guess in my toolkit, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll find uses for it. Um, uh, to be honest, on, on the authentication thing, a lot of things don't need like high security authentication. Like I, I could envision a, a, a setting where I might want to present results to a boss, a colleague or something, but, you know, and, and have a public version of an app where there's, you know, a back door provided by a cookie that that allows you know that internal members of your group to see parts of the app that others can't and i can yep. see how a cookie could be used to 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 switch that kind of functionality on in a way that if if you know well enough how to do this kind of stuff it would be quite easy to hack it but it's probably not something that's all too important that you need proper authentication to get someone in to see. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I guess kind of like the, what I wanted to say here, and I guess I will in, 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 in the notes that, uh, that that I'll post after after this session is really, really kind of like the overarching goal of this is to is is to utilize cookies as kind of like a store of a persistent store of values. Um, uh, and to have um, Shiny interact with that kind of store of values and, 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 and uh, via JavaScript in, in, in a few interesting ways. Um, so then, ah, here we go. Uh, to kind of set things off, there we are. Um, you know, as you mentioned, Russ, you know, this, this uh, chapter uh, looks at a particular JavaScript library called JS Cookie. Um, which provides, uh, it provides a broader set of tools on this. Uh, uh, I looked at the NPM repo uh, briefly, but uh, for our purposes, it, it you know, uh, most usefully provides kind of um, ways to interact with cookies, like a few, a few distinct ways to interact with cookies, ba basic ways, really. Mm -hmm. um, number one, to set cookies. Um, so basically to take, take values from, from the DOM, uh, from, from the browser, and then kind of set them in, 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 in cookies as, as storage. Um, and this is the function. Uh, basically, this is the form of the function that we'll see is just to set the cookie of, of, a, of a certain name with, with a certain value, right? Um, uh, just key, key value pairs. Um, um, and and then and then also to to get cookies from uh, to get cookies from from storage. Um, so in, in our in our cases, we'll see it will end up having just one cookie, but this is obviously you know extensible to a multi-cookie scenario, right? Um, to fetch to fetch a cookie, uh, you can kind of fetch a cookie in kind of two ways. We'll be using the second syntax. Uh, you can kind of fetch a, get a cookie uh, that has a particular uh, name associated with it and then retrieve the, the associated value. Uh, or alternatively, you could just fetch all the cookies in, in store and then you'll get you'll get this kind of um, this, this setup here where you have uh, you know a named a named value, I guess in R speak. Mm -hmm. um, you know you'll have some some name uh, as a name of the, the entity and then a, a value associated with it. Um, so set, get and then naturally delete so this is kind of like the the crud operations um uh so delete delete a cookie uh from the store uh, from the browser storage that has a particular name associated with it um and, and here's a little link for for the curious uh to to the npm repo um there may be other documentation elsewhere but this is what i found through some really quick quick googling um other stuff can be done with the library, interestingly, like a sort of, a, um, I guess you could say like a, a set, setting other other attributes of the cookies, like uh, their date of expiry. Um, so you could say, you know, let the cookie expire after a certain date, uh, or you can, uh, as I understood it, sort of do certain query, query operations where you can say, you know, fetch cookies that come from a certain domain or 
domain mm -hmm. subdomain, right? Not useful for our our use, but maybe useful more broadly. Um, yep. So that's it on kind of overall the, the JavaScript library that we'll be using. Um, so then uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm going to kind of talk about, I'm going to talk in turn about kind of the shiny side and then JavaScript side. Um, for each sort of trying to provide a high level description of what we want to do and then and then kind of walking through the code to do it um, after I've kind of done the walkthroughs of, of both the shiny side and the JavaScript side I'll, I'll we'll do the little brief brief demo and maybe we can kind of look at interesting parts of it that, that may not jump out immediately from the code um, so basically what we want to achieve um, is, you know kind of interaction terms is you know we want to have some shiny app where we can uh, write a name um, and then and then have the sh the shiny app immediately show the name that we've just uh, we've just uh, saved in the app in in the UI. Uh, we want to have a, an ability to delete the name uh, and then have the the shiny apps UI update accordingly, right? Um, uh, and then lastly, uh, we want uh, to be able to come back to this uh, app. Uh, you know, uh, either reload the page live or come back to the the, the 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 app after some arbitrarily long period of time, and then have the app sort of kind of show a UI that reflects the last state. So, mm. you know, what was the name that we'd last written, or had we, you know, had we deleted the name, you know, so that there's no name stored, right? Uh, that that part's kind of quite interesting. Um, and so then to kind of break this down in terms of functionality, as, as you might imagine on the UI side, we really want to have, um, you know, a text input where we can write a name. This is going to be kind of, you know, a, a hello Russ uh, type type example, uh, you know, hello insert name, mm. uh, uh, you know, so we'll, write, we'll compose a name, um, then we'll have a button uh, that will have the effect of saving the name, um, uh, as we'll see later as a cookie. Um, uh, uh, and then uh, another button that allows us to delete the name and the, well, actually the, the cookie itself, which has the effect of deleting the name in the UI. So that's kind of on the user interface. On, on, on the server side, to manage all of this, uh, we want to have um, really kind of a lot of observe events going on in the background. So when we press, when we press the save button, we want Shiny to pass the text value from the, the, the text field um, to to JavaScript via this this custom message handler, which we've we've seen previously, or forms mm -hmm. of we, forms of which we've seen previously, um, and then JavaScript will will do some some things in the background. We'll come to momentarily, but we basically want uh, you know upon pressing the save button, we want Shiny to take a value and pass it to JavaScript. Um, li likewise, with with the delete button, we want uh, the Shiny and on the server side to uh, you know when the delete button uh, in the UI is pressed we want uh, we want uh, actually I should have written this out maybe in a bit more detail we want shiny to send um, let, let's say send to JavaScript the name uh, the name of the cookie to delete so like kind of functionally we, we, we want uh, shiny kind of in effect uh, although not in an in, in implementation, but in effect to basically say to send instructions to JavaScript to delete, uh, mm. um, you know, um, the, the the name. So you mm? you you click the button. It yep. sends a message to the the server side of Shiny, which yep. then creates a message that sends back to the browser that deletes the appropriate cookie. Is that? So, so, sort of, yeah. So kind of this last bit comes in is, uh, you know, after each kind of delete event. So th this is kind of baked into the JavaScript side mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. after each operation, JavaScript basically send, if you will, like sends something back to Shiny to, to update yeah. the uh, to updates because we're, we're associating um, a JavaScript operation with kind of a, a shiny input, it basically updates the input uh, in shiny, and so then shiny kind of reacts reacts okay. accordingly, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So yeah, I was the, just I was uh, kind of wondering why, you know, we aren't clicking the button in the browser and the browser just, you know, the JavaScript running in the browser just says why at this stage in the book we're not just writing JavaScript that can 
do stuff directly in the browser that that uh, okay and stuff to shiny and back and things like that yeah um, i mean i think it's probably the honest truth might be that it's a sort of contrived example just to, yeah. <clears throat> to show to show like another facet of how we could use javascript yeah, right yeah. you know through, through through cookies at least that was my my read of things although i had kind of the same question as you uh reading this russ because uh, I mean, cl clearly we could have JavaScript more directly just interact with the DOM, right? Um, but it's not like it's going to be much data, so it's not, exactly, it's exactly, exactly. Um, uh, and then, kind of um, on 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 the on the kind of JavaScript side, JavaScript slash uh, uh, Shiny side, basically we're going to handle the interactions between R and JavaScript, or maybe Shiny and JavaScript through this custom message handler, right? So we're going to have um, you know, shiny send messages to JavaScript. And then actually the thing I didn't write here <clears throat> is, is that we're going to hook JavaScript into, uh, you know, like a shiny input so that when that input's updated, you know, uh, the shiny app will react accordingly. Um, and then JavaScript's going to kind of act as a, act as our, act as a service for kind of storing or managing values, uh, um, uh, in 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 browser in the cookie and cookies right well i mean what's kind of interesting about this bit you know maybe i i don't know if this is the best way of of, of doing this but it's maybe now i'm kind of coming to ideas of, of potential use cases is that you know it, it sort of provides you cheap persistent storage not not of heavy data but you can imagine like there might be a set of user inputs that might be parameters for some operation right so this might be an easy way in which to sort of have persistent storage with a shiny app without having to you know go through jump through a lot of hoops um i don't know just a quick quick ill-formed thought <laughs> Half-baked thought. Yeah, yeah. No, um, I mean, uh, Shiny itself has um, the, the 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 facility to add like, um, you, you know, like uh, key value pairs in the URL in the you know the right right. Mm -hmm. So the the from which those values can be interpreted by Shiny and used as parameters within the thing, and 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 maybe um, so it allows a user to start up from where they left off or, or something right like using your app many times and maybe using a cookie for that kind of setting where you know it might be i don't know something where the the data changes on a frequent basis or something like that but you know people want so people are frequently interacting with the app maybe using cookies in that setting may help them to get back to the state that they were in when they left using yeah that. yeah that's cool. yeah that's cool um so so on i guess to the, kind of the shiny implementation I mean, we've we've kind of talked through this verbally now like, i guess mm -hmm. we can see the, the associated code um i this is essentially drawn from from the book with a few few kind of comments uh um I mean, basically that I kind of provided sort of as marginal notes to help me better understand what was going on, or at least maybe better remember if I, as I come back to this three months uh, hence. <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, here, here we have, you know, the, uh, well, one thing that I'm not showing, but you can kind of easily imagine the book goes through this. So we have the traditional kind of typical kind of set, project setup where we have uh, a folder, a folder that stores our JavaScript code here. It's, uh, you know, I think in the previous week it was called assets because it uh, also contained uh, some CSS here. It's just the www folder that, you know, we often expect with Shiny. Um, so this, it, you know, this exists on, on, on the app side. I can show you on the demo kind of the, how the storage looks. Um, uh, so we're just kind of adding that resource path. Then in the UI uh, within the head, the head tag, we're just loading our JavaScript dependencies, and they're and they're and they're twofold. Um, first, uh, you know, we're fetching from uh, you know basically a CDN, uh, the uh, JS cookie library, um, right? Um, and then and then we're also loading from from local storage our JavaScript script, you know, properly called script.js. Uh, which you know implements the particular way in which we want to use this this uh, this library for for our app. Uh, so that's kind of the general bit. Um, you know, as we said before, text input, uh, buttons to save cookies, remove cookies, 
uh, and then uh, a little output that'll that'll basically show the show the text, uh, you know, this kind of hello Russ, hello Arthur type type thing. Mm. And come come now to the server side, um, we have what you know I, I mentioned before. Uh, you know, we have um, we have these observe events that are just kind of you know listeners to see you know to see if the if if the input uh, if the save button has been pressed, if the remove button has been pressed. Uh, and then to react accordingly. Uh, and the reactions are kind of as follows. So if, when the save button is pressed, uh, we'll basically create a, a list, you know, kind of a, a JSON friendly list where we're passing data to, to JavaScript in the form that it expects. Um, so we're going to have uh, this, this list with, with a name, uh, you know, imaginatively named name. Um, and, then, and then the value will be whatever we've provided in the, the text input field. So we're going to bundle that up in a in a in a message object uh, that we're then going to pass to, to JavaScript through this this uh, custom message handler. Uh, so, um, so the 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 name thing there that's what the cookie will be called, not the the user's name that we yeah, exactly have. exactly that's sort of a little right. con a little confusing. Yeah, yeah I, I tripped over that as well. So it's it's the the name of the cookie will be called name. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and the value of the name is is the value that that we provide in the uh, uh, the text the text input field here. What is what is your name? Mm -hmm. um, and that's transmitted over to JavaScript. Uh, so if you know if if the if it's non-empty, then then uh, then it'll be sent over to to, to JavaScript uh, to basically this this uh, you know handler cookie cookie set, which we'll see on the the JavaScript side shortly. Um, then, uh, then we have something set up for for the. So this is the the save event. So basically, kind of setting a you know, saving a cookie that, that that will contain will contain the name uh, that we want to pass to it. Now, now we can delete the cookie as well. Um, so here, what we're doing is, you know, when the the, the remove button is pressed, then um, we're going to transmit a message as well. But the me message is only going to have one element because uh, you know, kind of as we saw briefly previously. Uh, for for this library, uh, the, to, to to remove a cookie, all we need to all we need to provide uh, the library is the name of the cookie. Like uh, uh, so, the name is, hmm. is is name, not the name that the user app user provides, but the name is simply just the string name. Um, and then it's going to you know transmit the JavaScript via this message handler. Um, you know we're going to kind of target this cookie cookie remove um, uh, function that we'll we'll see shortly. Um, and then, and then here, uh, here is kind of the bit where where things get up, updated on, on on the shiny side. Um, so uh, we're going to we're going to we're going to pass to the uh, the user interface basically kind of the name that's being returned from from JavaScript uh, from from the cookie. So in the event that that the name is non-null, so it, it's a there is a cookie and there's a name to a name to return. That is a name that the user um, you know, types into the UI, then we'll, we'll, we'll basically say, you know, hello, comma, insert name, right? Mm. Uh, else, uh, there'll be a question of who, who are you? So the UI basically is kind of uh, dynamic in, in, in that sense. So different text will be shown as a function of what, what we find on the, uh, uh, in, in the cookie. So if the cookie has no, no contents, uh, or there's, there's no cookie to remove, then, then, you know, we'll, we'll see this text. That's so. That's the shiny app. Um, not too, yeah. Nothing really terribly difficult, but just a lot of kind of reacting to user inputs, and then most of the work, most of the heavy lifting, ends up being done on the on the the JavaScript side, yeah. to which we'll now turn. Um, so on the JavaScript side, what we want JavaScript to do is, you know. <laughs> Sorry, that should be manage, not to uh, uh, mange, uh, eat in French. Uh, um, so, although that works well with cookies, I guess. Uh, um, so, uh, manage manage values, you know, pass pass from Shiny, right? So, uh, it'll take those values, it'll it'll save those values as cookies, delete delete cookies that contain values, uh, and then you know, as we come back to the app, uh, either reloading the page or uh, or coming back to the app at any arbitrary future point, initialize the app. With you know, kind of the whatever the cookie, what, whatever there is in the kind of the cookie storage, if I can put it that way, the, the cookie jar, I guess, as it were. Um, 
and, 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 and then, you know, in each one of these operations, the save, delete, and initialize, for each one of these operations, we're going to ask JavaScript to basically um, return the current value from, the, from a cookie, right, um, as, as we'll see. Um, so then kind of the first, the first thing we want to do is we want to have this, this function get cookie, since it's going to be used in every other operation that we'll see in JavaScript, get cookie. Um, and, you know, so we'll, we'll basically just, you know, get, get, uh, get the cookie. Now this kind of assumes tacitly, you know, if we had multiple cookies, it would return, you know, uh, kind of, a, an array of cookies, I guess, but, you know, in our case, we have only one cookie, um, it's going to, uh, you know, store the cookie in this result. Um, uh, and, 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 and then, um, it's going to, uh, so, so for the JavaScript library, what it does is it basically returns this uh name value pair so what we're going to get back from javascript uh is this kind of json json entity where we're going to have you know name as the as the name and then value as 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 the value um so uh then what we're going to do is we're going to set up basically uh we're going to have javascript talk a method for javascript to talk to uh to set an input value in shiny with this this method right here um, so it's going to uh, set the value of cookies, uh, and it's going to take it's going to take this this res so result, which again will be this 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 named uh, named list. So in a certain sense, it's passing shiny this input, kind of in our terms, uh, dollar sign cookies. But mm -hmm. really, what we want at the end of the day is we want to to look at this you know input dollar sign cookies dollar sign name, which is the name that the user has 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 written, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So it's effect, effectively going to be the value, the value of this entity name. Um, mm -hmm. That's a little bit of a tricky bit. It took me some while to work to work out, I guess. Uh, um, at least the interface is a little mm -hmm. maybe non non intuitive, I suppose. Um, yeah. Right. So um, should really have read this, but there's so much stuff. Uh, is, you can actually access cookies that have been added to your browser by any uh, website I, I, I believe if you use this kind of approach so I, you could, I think you could I think that's sending. right yeah, yeah I think I think that's exactly right and that might be where it comes in you know if you wanted to uh, get a cookie for a certain domain this is something that we don't use like so let's imagine that our our app has a has a known address that we you know we know at deployment then you know maybe we could limit we could limit the scope of the search uh, for mm. the getting operation to that to that subdomain. Um, I mean, this this kind of shows up shows up here. I think this works in our particular case because we're getting. Um, actually, let me reason about why this does work. Actually, I might need to go back to the JavaScript library. I think perhaps for this particular library. Let's go back up to this bit. Um, right. So if you wanted to read a cookie um, with the name name, then you'll get the value. If you have some other text, then that's an undefined operation and it'll return nothing. Um, so read all visible cookies, it'll return. Still, I feel yes. like our so question it, our question is not quite answered unless yeah, yeah, you're getting you're getting it's this a difficult better than uh, I am. example. That so the cookies dot get will return an object that may contain thousands of cookies. Yes, each of which will have a a, a name, which we've unfortunately called name. <laughs> uh, each of which will have a name and, and a value associated with it. Um, so. Um, yeah, so so is, you can readily identify the one that you vote because you know what the name for that cookie should be but presumably if you've got access to all the yep. i don't know public the the you know i guess you'd call it publicly accessible cookies um on it within someone's browser yeah there, there could be many things in there um that yep. you may not want <laughs> exactly right okay um right but here cookies it, with the um 
in, in title case there, var res equals cookies dot get. That's a, a global object of that 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 that's released by JS Cookie, isn't it? Um, so that's something that the JS Cookie library has added to the 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 application, so that you can access, you can you refer to it from anywhere. Yeah, I think that's right. Is is a is a global or is it just function scope? But and, and anyway, yeah, yeah, it has has some way of yeah constructing an object from yeah okay um right so basically kind of you know we're we're defining a shiny input called cookies fetching the value from the of the of the cookie and the kind of all the cookies we have in our browser and then passing that value to to, to shiny um. Right. So this 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 function is going to, is going to end up getting used for each one of our other our other um, uh, message handlers. Uh, so come now to the kind of like the set the cookie uh, part. So you know when 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 on the shiny side we we um, press the save button, then uh, what this this kind of function is going to do is going to retrieve. Um, or sorry, it's going to receive the values from from Shiny. So remember, when Shiny, we're we're addressing this cookie dash set uh, message handler. So we're passing a message to JavaScript. So it's going to get received from Shiny. Uh, we're going to. This is something I added just to kind of print out in the console if we wanted to, to see it. Uh, the, the contents. Uh, uh, so it's going to it's going to take this the this, uh, take this this message and then and then set uh, set the basically create a create a cookie um, where your know, first argument is 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 the name um, <clears throat> that we've hard coded as the string name uh, and then the value which will turn out to be the the name that the user has input into into the UI. And then having done that, we'll, we'll, we'll basically fetch from the cookie store the value. Um, and then that's um, um, on the shiny side, basically, it, it's going to um, up, update the, uh, the input value cookies. And then sh the shiny app will, will, uh, will react accordingly. So here, <clears throat> basically, you know, um, we're, we're kind of listening um, for, for, for something from the shiny side. Shiny creates a, or sorry, JavaScript creates a cookie using the values from shiny. Um, and then JavaScript looks into the cookie storage and then returns a value that then Shiny, Shiny will in turn use to update the UI. Um, remove a cookie, same idea, different operation. Um, so here we're, we're listening, listening for um, uh, something from, from Shiny. So in Shiny, we address this remove dash cookie. Uh, we're going to remove the cookie uh, where the only argument we need here is, is the name, which is the uh, is the string name, um, and uh, and then and then you know after we've removed the cookie, we're then getting getting from storage the va the the value of cooking updating the UI. So in this case, since we've removed the cookie, the value will be null, and then Shiny seeing that it's null will will, will act accordingly. Um, remember, it's you know if there's a value, it says you know hello comma Russ, if there's no value, it'll say, what is your name, yeah. right? That's, that's the way that bit in Shiny will work. Um, and then the last part, which I thought kind of interesting um, to, to my novice eyes, it looks like this is uh, jQuery, um, uh, but basically uh, we want to also have JavaScript handle how Shiny should respond upon, I, I guess, kind of less connecting to the Shiny instance. There's apparently, uh, an event that happens when the page gets loaded because shiny um, connected. Uh, so basically when the uh, kind of in effect, like when the app gets loaded, we want something to happen. So we want JavaScript to search and uh, search in all of the cookies and uh, and then return us uh, return us a name. So so in that way, um, it can look into kind of this persistent storage via cookies and return some name to us from whatever the last state of the app was. So if there are no cookies uh, uh, of the type that we're looking for, then it's going to return null. Shiny will adapt the UI accordingly. Uh, um, in the other case, if, if there's some name that's found there, then then Shiny will, will return that to us. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that's kind of the quick walkthrough. A lot of hand waving here, but 
quick walkthrough yeah. of, of, of the of the JavaScript side. Um, so the, sh the, sh the shiny connected event, that that's something that like, how does it how does it work again? It's it, it's fired when the app has loaded all its loaded everything on the server side and the UI is rendered and shiny is now in a kind of idle post loading state something like that and you don't want this stuff to you don't want the cookies to be loaded before shiny's ready to receive them or something is that why the i don't quite so the yeah the so sorry i'm i'm not sure i'm not sure exactly how to characterize the event um i, I mean i i don't know if it's so like, let's let's imagine that you know a shiny app is just is deployed somewhere mm. and and then is this the event that a user connects to the shiny app so they they can like navigate to the address um or i think yeah or, it's or when, is it it's the, when the user's computer connects connects to the the shiny server an event is sent to their computer when the when shiny's in a kind of ready state okay um and like if you i don't know i mean presumably the um the script.js here will be sent to the browser before the the before the web socket i don't know maybe that's not right actually I'm yeah, I mean, sure it looks it looks like it was just uh, you know just part of the header here. Yeah, um, yeah. So I mean, I wonder if it's part of the process of rendering the UI. I I, I don't know. I mean, I it, it definitely you know functionally, it's before before the UI is kind of visible to the end user. But I'm not I'm not kind of quite right. clear exactly about how we come to that state. Yeah, um, yeah. and exactly what that state state is um yeah i mean maybe the you know the best but one one way to perhaps get at it might be uh let me move over the shiny app here <clears throat> um so this is in effect basically what i showed showed previously um you know we've just got uh whoops the project here um we've got our app app.r file and main storage i don't need this the r directory um got our www folder which contains the script.js uh, that's this file that is identical to what we found we found in the notes um right and so let me just run the app and that might give us a little bit better intuition or sense of what's what's going on so here i i, I guess i can say is you know when last i tinkered with this app, I deleted the cookie. Um, but you know what I can do is what is what is your name? Russ, save cookie, and you see the UI updates. Yeah. Um, actually, let me just come to the browser. And of course, it opens on the wrong screen. OK. Um, oh, interesting. This is uh, something I put my daughter's name in. OK. Oh, okay. I, I see what's going on here. I last tinkered with the app with the shiny with the shiny um, sorry with R Studios instance of Chrome. Basically, yeah. this is this is my real Chrome. Um, so this is actually I tinkered the other night with uh, just putting another <laughs> name in. So you can see the, what the last name mm -hmm. I put in was. Um, so here, let me remove it. Uh, save as Russ. Okay. Uh, reload the page. Russ appears again. Although it did seem like there was there was one moment at which the UI changed. At least at least visually, it looked like uh, that. Um, there's a little slight stutter. So maybe maybe the UI is already rendered, um, and then gets rapidly re-rendered um, as the user connects to the app. I don't know. Just a naive hypothesis. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know, I can remove, and then. There, there we are back to the initial state. 
Mm-hmm. All right. And so, uh, um, I'll just do testing. Let's close this browser instance. Um, open again in the browser. So opening again in Chrome. I'm bringing it back over from my other screen. You'll see the testing is there. So we close out the window, and now it's it's fetching it's fetching the the cookie from from my from my browser from my installed version of Chrome. Whereas presumably, yeah. Uh, Reload. This isn't quite the browser reload. It might actually re-render, right? Okay. And so this one is showing Rust, which was the last thing that we input into into this. Yep. So that's that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm um, sorry. I'm having having a look to see. There, there is actually a a package called Shiny Cookie, which ah. uh, wraps JS Cookie. Um, for for use in shiny apps, it looks like it's not been touched in a few years. But um, there's probably other uh, tools if you need to do this. But it's quite it's quite neat to see how you know the message handlers and stuff can achieve this without you having to um, have a package. Yeah, have a, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, uh and everything else that's come up on my searches is about like gdpr and things like that <laughs> <laughs> that's why i've not used cookies yet because i have no idea what the legal ramifications of them are. Uh, yeah good very good point i guess you'd have to have uh, one of those annoying messages pop up in your shiny app about uh are you willing to accept all the cookies here's how we plan to use the cookie said cookies uh, yeah Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah. I, so um, the so the chapter it's it's another bit of the 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 web technology that 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 could be incorporated into to your shiny app, which is quite neat. Um, yeah. There was a, there was a little bit at the end of the chapter where he was kind of indicating that now is a good time to work through some examples. Know, yeah. Yeah. Um and uh lazily I did not touch those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, no, I, I haven't done that yet either. I don't uh, to be honest, I'd be surprised if if I did anything related to the final three of these, but I think the micromodal thing could be quite quite interesting this, this one i might touch just out of uh personal interest i i don't I ha have you moved over to quarto yet uh russ i haven't well um our firm uh, they've, they've started writing um we have so many kind of markdown based right. course notes and websites and things like that that it, it will be a big migration um, right, right and they're doing chunks of it at a time but i i'm not really part of the, the 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 that um but to my mind it 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 doesn't look that different from our markdown so i i don't know how big <laughs> migration it would be for the things that i used to do in um in it, it's not yeah i mean so i'm kind of just starting down that path um mm. it does make a lot of things um so I, previously i was using kind of sharing sharing for 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 slides and um it, it makes a lot of the things that were um in sharing an extra kind of uh, already available with no extra effort to to the end user um i mean there, there may be lots of reasons perhaps to like quarter but that's 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 one yeah. uh, however I, I have noticed one one interesting bit is uh with um, sharing an extra, um, you, you could basically, uh, so if you had a tab set panel in your slides, uh, as you basically kind of page through your slides, it would capture, it would capture your key, your keys, your keystrokes and advance you through the tabs. Not the case with Quarto, um, kind of, uh, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Um, so just. I might go into that just to <laughs> yeah. figure out how all of that works and uh, 
maybe see if I can make make my Quarto stuff more sharing and sure. extra like. <laughs> cool. L- a long story to why that's that's uh, my potentially of interest. Cool. And then there's also I think the Abs- Absalon. Uh, I guess one one of your competitors, I suppose, but uh, Absalon had, uh, I think this this uh, shiny, uh, I think they, they basically done a game uh, as a shiny app. And so I think this was part of it too, is kind of capturing capturing the key, certain keystrokes that were, you know, directional movement of, of characters within, yeah, within the app. Yeah. I don't know. Could, could be interesting. Cool. Could Maybe be fun. <laughs> re-implement um, ancient 1980s computer games. I don't exactly. think I'd be able to do anything more advanced than that exactly um, yeah ace um cool right well uh yeah i mean thanks for taking us through that chapter uh, next week um is um widgets in shiny and i'm quite keen to do that talk um, oh fantastic uh yeah i so i've i um yeah i've changed the schedule a little bit um the, there's a thing going on on the alpha data science slack whereby they shut down the meetup the the book clubs for a week a week and a half or something while daylight savings time yeah 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 yeah. um and i think to be honest i'd I'd quite quite like to finish the book before we get to that because we'd have to have a week uh, with no book club and then the the following week i wouldn't be able to attend anyway uh-huh. Um, and and to be honest there's only really like there's t- to my mind there's like three additional weeks worth of content in the book after the widgets thing next week um which is the the stuff on using the v8 um javascript engine um and then there's two reasonable chunks on kind of webpack so um there's a, a kind of introductory and then there's a more advanced two chapters there's there's two chapters and then two chapters which i think would make a, each would probably make a week's worth of content um so it, i i'd quite like to just get the the book done before the daylight savings thing comes in and yeah i'm 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 on board with that russ and i'm sorry i hadn't had a chance to uh, kind of look over your your proposal but uh but i mean i think that sounds that sounds reasonable i I think we kind of notionally agreed last time that the the javascript for computation at least at present doesn't seem to be of interest for the Mm. two of us but uh the, the 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 parts that are the additional parts that have to do with um you know kind of web development type stuff uh are um, I mean, at least worth a quick. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so I, I, so I think what we'll do is we'll do the shiny widgets thing next week, and then we'll do the first two webpack chapters, and then we'll do the second of the two. It's the second two of the yep. four webpack chapters, and then um, it's just um, yeah. I think I think it would be quite good to get the the book polished off and maybe try and I, I i mean in subsequent weeks if you want to kind of interact and show off kind of projects that you worked on based on the the book and things like that the you know the the chat room's always open and, and whatnot um but yeah i'd quite like to get the the, <laughs> the book done because <laughs> yeah um because that's such an awkward couple of weeks when everyone's times are changing around anyway Brilliant. Um, and I will see you next week for um, HTML widgets in Shiny. Perfect. And Russ, really, really quickly, um, uh, I mean, we could chat on this on, on, on Slack instead if you prefer, but I, uh, you, were you thinking of starting something up for the outstanding user interfaces with Shiny? Yeah, yeah. but probably in like February of next year or something. That, like would, that. that would suit me. Very yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I did want to do another kind of book club sometime during winter on maybe on something really sh- short like working through the targets vignettes and or, or something like that but um i'm now in a book club at work as well so i'm not overly keen but yes the outstanding user interfaces thing i 
I've wanted to work through um, for like t 12 months now because it's been available online, you know, on, on the website and whatnot to, to, to work through. But I, I was really nervous about starting on it because it looked so out of my comfort zone when I started doing the, because, you know, this time yep. last year, I had literally no JavaScript working knowledge. And what what I knew of the syntax <laughs> changed since I last learned its syntax. <laughs> and we'll um, change again, uh, probably uh, <laughs> before the next time you touch it's, it. It's like one of these kind of weird languages where you learn it again every couple of years, and then <laughs> you come back two years later, and everything you learned has changed again. Um, but yes, um, the outstanding user interfaces was was something I really wanted to work through. It's a little bit bigger than the JavaScript book, um, yeah. and I think it's a little bit more um, demanding in in terms of the the background knowledge. That you know, for for a typical R user, I think it's a bit more demanding in terms of what you know about web technologies, about got JavaScript, it. and about CSS. Got um, it. Got it. But uh, yeah, I think it'll be a really, it, personally, I think it'll be a really valuable book to deep dive on. Yep. I've, um, I've had an eye on this, like kind of for next steps for me, like an idea, you know, eye on this as well as the engineering production, was it, yeah, uh, the, yeah. uh, you know, um, production grade shiny apps or whatever the name of the book is, the, yeah, the, yeah. the Golem book, let's call it's, it for it's short. A good, it's uh, a good book. That, um, no, it's a really good book. It, and interestingly, it's it's not so much about Golem, you know, I mean, yeah, it, yeah. it is at a point, but I think they say they spent, um, a really um, quite a lot of the book helpfully discussing more kind of first principles, if I can put it that way. Yeah. Well, um, what, what I found, what I took away from it was that there was more in there about the the process of software engineering yep, yep. than there was about using a specific tool. And it was there was there's inf interesting ideas in there that I've used since lo looking at it that that you know, uh, kind of, you know, about um, how you kind of, you know, build prototypes and, and, and how you kind of demonstrate to a client how th that things work as they, as you claim that they do and things like that. And um, yeah, it's, it's been really valuable to me as, you know, as a kind of post-science programmer now. Um, yeah. To, to have a bit more kind of a professional <laughs> basis to my yeah yeah. Um, uh, yeah yeah it's a good book I, I i don't know how many other people there there will be in in our for data science who'd want to start that because last year we had um, myself federica and ryan were attending the 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 book club for that um, there were a few more people at the start of it as there always is um yeah and I, I i don't know i think it's it's a good book and it's relatively short as well um yeah, yeah. so it is feasible to do it in a couple of months rather than yeah. i'm just kind of contemplating next moves uh on on my side I'll, i mean it kind of broadly is, is your sense uh i mean which would you kind of view as maybe the more the the more advanced book or put alternatively like the less less advanced book or are they sort of orthogonal you know kind of tree, I, I think create create co complementary sets of information about I, the same yeah thing. i don't think there's a great deal of overlap in terms of um the um learnings you know i mean there, there is a little bit of stuff in there about in the engineering book on javascript and css and stuff but it's not like it, it, it's not particularly important to the the narrative of, of that book i, I see. think it, it's not so it's it's really not a kind of like a, a teaching you a tool type book um and i think i think they really are quite different in the perspective in which they're written and yep. in terms of the the content that they cover so I, so, I so hearing that... you talk it sounds like the engineering book might be more akin to kind of like our packages if I, if I could put it that way in the sense of you know it's it's uh getting you familiar with a workflow but sort of uh yeah, the work yeah. that you do is left up to the end user you know like you bring your knowledge of javascript and css or not 
Um, but yeah. you know, the, uh, whereas shiny user interface, uh, outstanding shiny users, uh, outstanding user interfaces with shiny is more to do with uh, the nitty gritties, uh, perhaps of, of actually implementing uh, some of this. Is that, is that kind of broadly correct? I think so. As, yeah. as you understand yeah, yeah. it, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I mean, the the user interfaces book, I, I've just kind of dipped in and out of the, the the chapters. To be honest, I have read a few of the early chapters in depth and whatnot but yeah that that is my that is my understanding of the two cool right i ought to head okay. off lovely to all see right. you again all right likewise take care russ all right bye bye